Are you the type of person that's into hobbies? Or just like to tinker on things in the garage or anything for that matter? Or maybe you're into coding, just learning coding, or an advanced programmer. Or maybe you just need something new, something to fill a void or take up some free time that you have. Well, have I got the thing for you. Introducing Raspberry Pi. It's tasty, flaky, and delicious. Dad, not that raspberry pie, this raspberry pie. Oh, okay. That makes more sense. Here, you wanna come say hi? Okay, hi. Mm. Hi. Little guy brought me some raspberry pie, too. As a matter of fact, just two different kinds. One that you eat, and one that you don't. High five. Later, dude. Thank you. So this is a Raspberry Pi. You might have seen it featured in some other videos or previous videos of mine. Let me cover my face so the camera will focus on it. There we go. Raspberry Pi. This is a Raspberry Pi 3B, one gigabyte, and it's like I said before in the other videos, it's a whole computer in the palm of your hand. They can be built into all different kinds of things. They can be built into a pen testing device, or they can be used as a complete desktop running different kinds of operating systems and there's a whole myriad of operating systems that you can choose from to run on your Raspberry Pi so what's the issue then well the issue is is that for some reason there's not enough Raspberry Pis to go around so that's creating a scalper issue where scalpers are buying up all the Raspberry Pis and jacking up the prices to resell them so if you want to buy a Raspberry Pi 3B, the older generation, the newest generation's Raspberry Pi 4. But even one of these, you're gonna pay around 100 to 130 bucks average. Mind you, this is a $35 computer. Actually, $35 for the four, I think, now. So these are probably even cheaper. Yet people are paying literally an extra $100 bill on top of the price for it. So what's what can we do to solve this problem if you still have a project to work on? Well, fortunately, there's actually some pretty good alternatives. I can't speak for all of the alternatives because there's a lot more than I realized. But we're going to stick with a couple of the more popular ones because community is very important with things like this. If you find yourself stuck or struggling, you can reach out to the community, find some people on forums, and start a conversation, and get some help working through your issues most of the time. But if you choose a board that's got zero community whatsoever, it makes it a lot harder when you run into trouble. So, the ones that I have with me today is La Potato with my custom heat sink that I chopped up to put on there. I had some thermal issues with this one. So minus the heat sinks, this is what it looks like. And if you put it side by side with the raspberry, one thing that you'll notice, it's pretty much an exact clone of the raspberry. Now here in a few moments, we're gonna put the board side by side and do some really detailed specification comparisons and I'll give you guys all the detailed specifications for each board and how they compare. But first, we're gonna talk a little bit about the more obvious differences in the boards. The next option is right here. Now this one is a little bit different form factor than the Raspberry. We'll do a side by side here again. So if you look at those, 
we have same size board but the mounting holes are a different layout as well as the IO layout is also different however it is very similar and both of these boards are capable of doing 90% of what the Raspberry Pi can also both of these boards have some benefits over the Raspberry Pi the Raspberry Pi though also has some benefits over both of these boards so what would be best for you well instead of paying a hundred to hundred and thirty five dollars for a Raspberry Pi 3b or up to two 200 to 250 dollars for a raspberry pi 4 maybe you can get by with this for your project i've come a long way with this thing i have it running armbium right now but i've had it running multiple different operating systems i've also set it up as an emulator and played a little bit of games on it the potato how much is the potato the potato is going to run you for this model right here 35 bucks you can get this model with only one gigabyte of ram and it's only 30 bucks so if you're on a budget and you don't need very much memory for whatever you're going to be using the potato for by all means this has like i said everything from the gpio to the other io it's all laid out exactly like the raspberry so most things that will be compatible with the raspberry are compatible with the potato the orange pie however it has a different layout it also has a different gpio has a 26 pin gpio on the orange pie on the raspberry and on the potato has a 40 pin gpio unless i miscounted so how much will the orange pie run you how much is this going to cost you well for this model right here i paid 47 dollars for i believe so what one's right for you honestly i don't know but most likely any one of them so it's really a question of which one do you want and how much money do you want to spend we're in the 30 dollar price part point 50 dollar price point and minimum of 75 dollar price point so operating systems what operating system is right for you if you're into just your basic coding and possibly pen testing and other network or security work or server work, these ones run Armbium. Works out pretty well for me so far. The orange pie here, this one, and also running Armbium. This one right here, this one, the pen testing tool, it's actually running Raspbian and it's worked out just fine so far. Last but not least, Raspberry Pi number two. This one is running an operating system called Dragon OS. Dragon OS is beneficial for me because, well, I'm a ham. Thumbs up to all you other hams out there. KJ7 YCE. So where do you find these things? Well, you can find them all on Amazon and you can find them all on eBay. eBay is the only place you're going to find a decent price on a Raspberry itself. This video is not sponsored. I spent my own money on these items right here. So I have a completely unbiased opinion. I'm going to be making a haptic suit. So a lot of what my project needs, I can do from like a microcontroller, which is um one second which is one of these this is a raspberry pi pico this is the non-wi-fi version these are not a single board computer like these are these are single board computers these are microcontrollers the item i'm designing has features that could all be accomplished with a microcontroller i don't think i would have to use a single board computer i choose to one because games start to offer automatic programming for haptic suits in the future my haptic suit will have the headroom and processing power to be able to do it so what's right for you well i'm gonna leave links below these guys right here are only four bucks a piece so if you can get by with a microcontroller hello go that route if you have to have a raspberry you can pay the scalpers or you can go on ebay and try to find a deal if you enjoyed the video subscribe because we're gonna be doing lots of cool stuff and i'm gonna take you guys along the ride as i build the haptic suit but what we're gonna do now is we're going to put these boards side by side and we are going to compare them we're gonna have the raspberry off to one side and then we'll have one of the generic boards on the other side and we will compare them and we will go through the exact specifications so we're going to get into the exact technical differences right now 
So on the Raspberry, we have a quad core 1.2 gigahertz Broadcom BCM 2837 64-bit CPU right here. We have one gigabyte of RAM, which is located right here on the other side of the board, which we will see in a moment. It has a BCM wireless LAN on board, 100 megabyte base Ethernet. It has a 40 pin GPIO, as well as four USB 2.0 a port as well as a three and a half millimeter jack on the side it has a full-size hdmi as well as a csi camera port for connecting a camera i believe that's one of these right here it has a dsi display port for connecting a raspberry pi touch screen display which i believe is this one right here it also has a micro sd slot which is on the other side of the board we'll see that in a moment that's where you'll put your operating system it also has an upgraded switch micro usb power source up to 2.5 amp located right here all right the orange pie here has the all winner apex quad core 64 bit 1.8 gigahertz high performance as well as the cortex a53 processor so it's got two two different kinds of cores inside that processor in essence and that is paired with the high-performance multi-core GPU Mali T720. It has two gigabytes of LP DDR3 that's shared with the GPU, micro SD slot, which is on the other side, which is your storage, as well as eight gigabytes eMMC on board. It has a full-size HDMI with onboard Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. It has a three and a half millimeter jack, as usual, as well as a Type C power support it has a 26 pin as we discussed earlier for its gpio which will be somewhat limiting if you're coming from a raspberry but you should be able to find a workaround i would imagine it has a power button right here which is a nice thing that the other ones don't actually have it has an led light to show you computer activity as well as an infrared receiver on the orange pie, we also have two USB 2 ports, a 100 megabyte Ethernet port, and they traded the other two USB 2 ports for one USB Type 3. Here we have another Raspberry Pi product. This one has a dual core ARM Cortex MO Plus processor that has 264 bytes of internal RAM and support for up to 16 megabytes of off chip flash. These support a wide range of flexible I.O. options including 12C, SPI, and uniquely programmable I.O. All of these pins here can all serve different kinds of purposes. The possibilities are endless with these things, especially for a small and affordable package, because these you can pick up for four bucks a piece still today. On this, we have a micro SD input power supply, or I'm sure you can get power from one of these pins somewhere. So this is unsoldered, the pins are not soldered to it yet. It's just, I opened the package, literally put it here for you guys. Last but not least, we have La Potato. On La Potato, we have the quad core arm a53 cpu that's paired with the pentacore arm molly 450 gpu it's 4k capable allegedly i haven't done that yet i don't know that i would try it has four usb 2.0 type a as well as a 100 megabyte ethernet port it has a u button like a reset button right here which is a nice thing to have if you need to reflash something to the onboard emmc you have a 40 pin gpio right here a three and a half millimeter audio jack two gigabytes of ram unless you got the one gigabyte version then one of these slots will be unpopulated, just blank white slot. You have a full-size HDMI, as well as a UART header, and a micro USB power in. Right here we have three LED lights and an infrared receiver. So, let's flip these things over, take a look at the back. On the back of the Raspberry here, we can see the RAM, the LP DDR2. On the back of this one, we can see those same two RAM chips. 
or actually no, two more. I believe we have two sided, so you got a chip on one side, another chip on the other, and I believe each one of them is a quarter of a gig. So 256 megabytes per chip for a total of two somewhat gigabytes. Right here, this is a slot where the eMMC storage chip would go. If you decided to go that route to store your operating system, giving you your full storage capacity of whatever size SD card. And apparently it's a tad faster, but a marginal amount. I haven't done it myself, I'm just going recording of information I found. And last but not least, back of the orange pie, we just have our SD card slot. So on my other Raspberry, the one that uh, had the power plug ripped off, what I did was I found power on the GPIO, which would be right here and right here. No, actually, it would be right here and right here is the power and the ground. So I had to solder to those two pins in order to have power. Otherwise, I would have had to attach to the pins on top, which would block the GPIO from being used from other things. So that's why I opted to solder on a power to the back right here, because replacing the power adapter was more complicated than just pulling power from right here on my own and I have an attached permanent power supply to my Raspberry now that I super glued in place so it can't come loose and rip off or have any short issues. And here is the ultra simple back of the Raspberry Pi Pico. As you can see there's really nothing to it. I'll show you guys up close. Really nothing to it right? All these pins right here, little holes on the side. That's where the pins go. So I'm reviewing all three of these because I've used them all for different kinds of things and I can give you guys some really solid viewpoints on what I think and how each one of them performs.